I think I can start. Okay. So um, today I'm going to introduce our project called GenePip. Uh, okay. So GenePip is an in-memory acceleration of uh, genome analysis via in, uh, tight integration of the uh, nanopore genome analysis steps. So first, I will give an overview of the back, uh, the the whole project. Then I will go to the details. Uh, genome analysis enables us to determine the order of the DNA sequence in an organism's genome. It plays an important role in the personalized medicine, outbreak tracing, understand the evolution, and so on. Modern genome sequencing machines extract the smaller randomized fragments of the original DNA sequence which is known as reads. And uh, this project we mainly focus on the uh, Oxford Nanopore technologies, uh, which is known as ONT technologies, because it's a wide, widely used sequencing technology. And uh, uh, also it's, it provides portable uh, sequencing uh, devices. As you can see on the uh, right side, it's just a palm size and uh, it, uh, has high throughput, also it's very cheap. So we observed, um, because there are multiple uh, steps in genome analysis and we observed uh, two, there are two main limitations in the current uh, nanopore genome analysis, uh, star analysis. So first, there's a large data movement between multiple steps. And second, there's a lot of wasted computation done on the data that is later to be uh, discovered to be useless. That's why we propose GenePip. GenePip is the first energy efficient in memory acceleration system for the genome analysis pipeline via in a tight integration of genome analysis steps. GenePip has two key techniques. Uh, the first one is the trunk based pipeline, which provides a fine grained uh, cooperation of genome analysis steps. And the second one is early rejection, which timely stops the execution on useless data by predicting which reads will not be useful. GenePip outperforms the state of our software and hardware solutions. So, uh, okay, then I will go to the detail uh, about, about this project. First, I will talk about the background and motivation of this project. So, uh, first, I introduce the genome analysis pipeline. Uh, when we um, sequence the genome uh, with the nanopore sequencing machine, we get the raw signals and we store them in the storage. And after that, we read out them to the uh, to ex execute the first step, which is base calling. And uh, uh, during the base calling, we translate the uh, raw signals into the basis, which, which is known as ACGT characters. And uh, uh, here we, you can see that uh, we translate them uh, in the granularity of a trunk, and then uh, we like uh, assemble them into a read. Here, the uh, green one represents a high quality translation, and the, the red one represents the low quality translation. After we finish all of the translation, we store the reads in the storage and continue with the next step, which is usually the read quality control. In the read quality control, we uh, discard the low quality reads and uh, then we uh, store the high quality reads in the storage and continue with the next step, which is usually uh, read mapping. In the read mapping, we compare the reads to the reference genome and if the reads cannot be mapped to the reference genome, then we discard it. If the read can be mapped to the reference genome, then we store the mapping results. So I go um, more details about the, these uh, three key steps. So first the uh, step is base calling. Base calling usually use the deep neural networks to ensure the base calling accuracy. Uh, so the input of base calling is the raw signals. And uh, when we do the base calling, we translate the raw signals into bases and calculate the ba uh, each base cal uh, 
quality at the same time. And the output is uh, uh, the long reads uh, along with the uh, quality score for each base. So the second step is read quality control uh, from which we have the uh, basis, uh, base quality scores for the long reads as an input. And we calculate the average uh, quality score of this read. And then we compare the read quality score with the threshold. And if it's higher than the threshold, we uh, define them as a high quality uh, read. And if it's lower than the threshold, then it's uh, low quality reads and we discard the low quality reads. So the third one is read mapping. In the read mapping, we have the uh, uh, pre uh, analysis step called indexing in which we uh, reorganize the reference genome in the Mm, for example, in the shape of a hash table, uh, which enables us to query the uh, reference genome uh, faster. And uh, for the read mapping, the first uh, the input should be high quality long reads from the uh, read quality control. And uh, then we <clears throat> go through the seeding step and we, in which we use the uh, we generate the subsequence from the reads and query the uh, hash table which stored the reference genome, and we get the possible locations of the uh, subsequence inside the reads. Then we do the chaining in, in which uh, it identifies the candidate regions and output the chaining score. And finally, we ex execute the alignment step if there's a chain. So the output should be the mapping information here. Um, so in all of these uh, steps, we found two uh, main limitations. The first is large data movement. We use the human data set as example to explain uh, in detail. So uh, for example, in this uh, human data set, we have uh, uh, nearly uh, 4,000 gigabytes raw signals. And after base calling, we still have uh, 500 uh, gigabyte reads. And after record control, we still have uh, uh, more than 400 gigabytes high quality reads. And uh, after read mapping, we need to store the uh, final result. So as you can see here, uh, between each analysis steps, there are uh, large data movements. So the next, uh, uh, the second animation uh, is the waste computation. We use the same data sets to explain more. So here in the example, after base calling, we have all of the reads, and but the other uh, read quality control, we only maybe have uh, uh, less than 80% of high, high quality reads. And after read mapping, we only have uh, less than 70% of uh, the reads. So here we conclude that there's a considerable amount of computation on useless data due to the low quality reads and unmapped reads. Uh, so uh, I will explain more about the state of art work. So OEM-based PIM is an efficient technique to reduce the data movement by processing data using on near memory. And so here is an example that used the OEM-based PIM for the vector matrix uh, multiplication operations to accelerate the base calling because the, it's the dominant operation inside the neural network applications and base calling using the neural network uh, to translate the raw signals to the um, reads. And here are more details about the structures. So basically in the RM array, you store the, um, the matrix in the RM cell and uh, using the multiply accumulation operation uh, as a, so basically you apply the voltage as an input vector, and then uh, you collect the uh, uh, sensing the voltage on the bit line to get the result of the um, multiply accumulated uh, operation. So here is an example to uh, visualize the, the uh, operation. So first of all, we have the 
um, resistance um, represent the uh, vectors, and uh, we add the we apply the voltages on the watt line, and uh, uh, according to the Kirchhoff's law, um, and we accumulate all of the um, current on the bit plan, and through this, we do a uh, uh, vector multiply vector operation in a read cycle which is really efficient just as with a, a sensing um, operation so uh, here is some more details that how we can do the uh, vector multiply matrix operation uh, first of all we store the matrix in the uh, rm array and then we convert the vector input vector and apply them on the uh, what line and through the sensing we can get the output so as you can see we can do a mm, vector multiply matrix in just one read cycle here is some um, uh, overall like a uh, design for the neural network solution so we basically have the crossbars and uh, which can do the uh, vector multiply matrix operation and uh, we have uh, um other uh, units such as the sigmoid operation and uh, max pooling operation to support the other operations inside the neural network application so with the, all of this uh, design you can use the this kind of chip to accelerate the neural networks very efficiently inside the memory um so this is a uh, one accelerator um, prior work to the base uh, designed for designed for the the neural network, which we can also use for the base calling because it's a neural network accelerator. And the second one, there's also uh, some other accelerators for the read mapping since it's also a very time consuming step inside the uh, whole pipeline. And uh, here is an example that we use the NVM-based PIM for the search and addition operation. And uh, uh, since the search and addition are the dominant operation in the read mapping step. So um, these are two like uh, representative uh, accelerators in memory accelerators for base calling or read mapping. Um, and uh, these kind of in-memory accelerators, they do reduce the data movement in a single genome analysis step. However, uh, it exacerbated the data movement overhead between the analysis steps. And uh, we conclude that there's uh, no prior work tackles data movement between analysis steps and reduce the useless computation. So uh, our goal is to efficiently accelerate the entire genome analysis pipeline while minimizing the data movement and the useless computation. We perform a study to uh, quantify uh, potential performance benefits, and the results are normalized to the performance of GPU. So firstly, we uh, uh, do the analysis on the uh, OVM-based PIM accelerators for the separate base calling and read mapping step which can achieve 2.7 speed times speed up of GPU. And second, we assume there's no data movement between these two accelerators, and which can achieve uh, 6.1 times speed up. Third, we assume there's no data movement and no useless reads, which is ideal case, can achieve up to um, nine times uh, speed up over GPU. Uh, next, I will introduce the GenePip. GenePip is the first holistic in-memory accelerator for the genome analysis pipeline, including base calling, read quality control, and read mapping steps. GenePip has two key techniques, uh, trunk-based pipeline and early rejection. So first, I will introduce trunk-based pipeline. It enables uh, fine-grained pipelining of the genome analysis steps inside the nanopore sequence. And uh, it processes reads at the trunk granularity, which usually is much, much smaller than a uh, read, a subsequence inside the read. So um, 
Trunk based pipeline increases the parism by overlapping the execution of different steps at the trunk granularity. And CP also reduce, uh, reduces intermediate data by computing on data as soon as data is generated. CP also provides opportunities for ER by an analyzing a read at trunk granularity. So we use an example uh, that uh, does a read consists of four trunks, C1 to C4. In the conventional pipeline, we base call all of uh, these four trunks. And after that, we assemble them into a read. And we do the quality control on the read. And uh, we do the read mapping on the read. In our trunk-based pipeline, we first base call a trunk. And at the same time, we base call the uh, second trunk. We do the quality control on the first trunk. and we do the partition read mapping computation on the first trunk. And after that, finish all of the trunks and we assemble them uh, and we finish the um, rest computation of read mapping on the granular read. So here you can see we saved a lot of computational cycles. Uh, the second key technique of GenePip is early rejection. Early rejection stops the execution on user trees as early as possible by using a small number of trunks to predict the usefulness of a read. Early rejection predict and eliminate low quality and unmapped reads from the genome analysis pipeline as early as possible. So here is a flow of the early rejection. First, we base call a small number of trunks and then we check the average quality score of these trunks. If it fails, then we stop analysis. If it passes, then we base call more trunks. And uh, we mapped the base, base call trunks so far to the reference genome and check the mapping score. If it fails, then we stop analysis. If it passes, then we continue base call the remaining trunks and uh, we execute the remaining computation in read mapping. So as you can see here, uh, early rejection includes the uh, rejection based on the trunk granularity, uh, the, the trunk quality scores, and uh, uh, also include the uh, early rejection based on the trunk mapping scores. And I give more details about the early rejection based on the trunk quality scores. So here is a, uh, the goal of the uh, ERQ uh, CQLs is to accurately estimate the quality of the entire read by checking the quality of a small number of trunk, uh, sample trunks. So here is an example. In this example, um, the left one is the low quality reads and the right one is the high quality reads. And we made uh, three observations. The, the first one is the range of quality scores for the trunks extracted from the high quality reads is greatly higher than that from the low quality reads. And the second ob observation is that a single trunk's uh, quality score is not enough to predict a read quality score because, as you can see here in the yellow one, uh, there are many trunks whose quality score are larger than seven here. And the third observation is that the consecutive trunks, co uh, trunks quality scores are usually close to each other. Uh, and uh, which indicating that sampling consecutive trunks may not be representative enough to estimate the quality uh, of uh, entire reads. That's why we um, proposed uh, to sample a small number of non-consecutive trunks evenly in the read to predict the read quality. So for the uh, mm, ER-based uh, trunk mapping, here we have a uh, we map, you observe that mapping a small trunks provide too many possible uh, mapping locations. And we sample a small number of uh, consecutive trunks in the read, and then we merge them in uh, into a bigger trunk. And we map this trunk into the reference genome to predict whether the read can be mapped or not. So uh, it's worth to mention that uh, the both both uh, CPU and ER can be applied on different systems, such as CPU, GPU, and PIM. And we implement CPU and ER using PIM, since PIM is more efficient to reduce the data movement between genome analysis steps. We also apply CPU and ER on CPU and GPU baselines and observe speed up and energy savings. So let's go uh, through maybe a little bit uh, 
uh, detail about the GenePip implementation. So GenePip has three modules, uh, base calling module, uh, read mapping module, and the, the GenePip controller. First of all, we uh, receive the raw signals from the sequencing machine and uh, store them in the EDRAM, and then we forward the signal chunks to the in-memory base caller. And uh, after we calculate the uh, base call, the chunks, and uh, we calculate the base quality score using our uh, uh, PIM based chunk quality score calculation, and uh, then we forward both the base called trunks and the trunk called quality score to the gene pip controller. And then uh, after that, we forward the trunks to the read mapping module and uh, uh, so that we can get the read mapping result. To enable the early rejection, uh, we forward, uh, we get the information from the trunks, trunk, uh, the, the trunk quality score calculation. And uh, there's a ER controller inside the GenePip controller to compare the um, quality scores uh, with the threshold. If there's a early rejection, then we send the signals to the base calling module to end the uh, current execution on the read. And uh, we also uh, get the information from the read map mapping module for the trunk mapping scores. And if there's an early rejection based on the trunk mapping score, then we send the uh, early rejection signal to both modules to terminate the execution of the on the current read. So here are the uh, new designs in, uh, in this project. And it's uh, uh, worth to mention that uh, we have a very efficient in-memory seeding module. Here we uh, have the base call chunks from the gene pip controller, and we store them in the EDRAM buffer and uh, borrow the trunk to the query string generator. The query string generator is a uh, shift, shifted register uh, whose length is the two times of the, the of a, of a, uh, the, the trunk of a substring. Then we uh, can shift one by uh, shift one character each time and generate a substring from a trunk very easily. And after that, we send a, a compare the uh, substring with the uh, keys that's stored in the RM base cam and uh, get the address to fetch the uh, values which uh, are. are corresponding locations in the reference genome. And then we store the possible locations and forward to the uh, mapping controller. So through all of these tight, uh, tightly integrating the um, genome analysis steps, we can reduce uh, a lot of data movement, also animate the useless computation as, as much as we can. So, okay, then let's have a look at the evaluation. And uh, we use uh, several uh, simulation technologies and also uh, there are more details about it. You can see, uh, refer, uh, read our paper for more uh, methodology. And uh, for the baselines, we use a CPU, GPU, and uh, optimistic integration of two PIM accelerators, uh, which we assume uh, there's no data movement between these steps. And uh, we also assume there's no intermediate data uh, which causes uh, in, causes no overhead. And uh, we use two data sets, uh, E. coli and human data set. Here are the results for the performance. So GenePip has uh, achieved uh, 41 times speed up compared to CPU and uh, 8.4 times speed up of a GPU and 1.4 speed up of a optimistic P. And both uh, more results in the paper shows that uh, both CP and ER are critical to the speed up. And for the energy efficiency, mm, Gene paper provides 22.8 times uh, energy saving compared to CPU, 
um, 20.8 times energy saving compared to GPU and uh, 1.37 times energy saving compared with the optimistic PIM. ER is uh, a more, there's more results show that ER is especially critical to the energy efficiency. And uh, we also provide uh, several sensitive analysis which we uh, did offline and we by this uh, pre-analysis, we can decide like how many, um, how many trunks we used to do the uh, early rejection based on the trunk quality scores and uh, uh, how many trunks we used to do the early rejection based on the trunk mapping. So here are some more results. You can check it uh, in the paper. Okay, so, and there are more details in the paper and uh, please uh, feel free to check it. And uh, if you have any question, you, you can send email to me. Yeah, so to conclude, uh, the problem we targeting in this project is that the genome analysis pipeline has a large data movement between genome analysis steps and a significant amount of wasted computation on useless data. And so our goal is to tightly integrate genome analysis steps to reduce the data movement between steps and eliminate the computation on useless data. So that's why we propose GenePIP, the first in-memory genome analysis accelerator that tightly integrates genome analysis steps. GenePIP has two key techniques, a trunk-based pipeline and a new early rejection technique. GenePIP outperforms the state-of-art software hardware solutions using CPU, GPU, and the optimi optimistic PIM. So that's all. Um, thank you for listening. Feel free to ask questions if you have any.